Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is run through a typical question where we've got to find the equation of a tangent to an ellipse at a given point. So we've got this ellipse x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And the point P that we're given has coordinates x coordinate minus 2 root 3 and y coordinate 1. In fact, you might even want to have a go at this before I take you slowly through the work solution. So in order to find the tangent, we've got to find the gradient. We need to differentiate our curve here. Um, we can get that gradient then by differentiating the equation implicitly, or we could use the parametric form of the equation and then get dy by dx through doing parametric differentiation. For this type of question, where this point here is not given in parametric coordinates, implicit differentiation, I feel, is the quicker, better method. But I'll leave it up to you. What I'm going to do is show you both methods anyway. So first of all then, let's differentiate the curve implicitly. So just put an intro here, differentiate with respect to x. So differentiating the first term, gives us 2x over 16. Second term would be 2y over 4, and that's multiplied by dy by dx, and that's going to equal 0. We can cancel each of these fractions down. That becomes 1 eighth. That becomes a half. Then rearranging this for dy by dx, we end up with dy by dx equaling minus x over 4y. So just substituting our values in, we've got the gradient of the tangent at p. So just put an intro here, gradient of tangent at p, that's going to equal, we've got minus x, which is minus 2 root 3, and that's all divided by 4y, so that's just simply 4, and we end up with root 3 over 2. So that's one way that we could get our gradient. The other way is to differentiate the parametric equation. So what would the parametric equation be? Well, we should be familiar with x equaling a cos theta. Remember the 16 represents a squared, so a would be 4. So we've got x equals 4 cos theta, and the y equation would be b sine theta. b squared is 4, so b would be 2. So we've got y equals 2 sine theta. If you're unsure of the parametric form, do check out my earlier videos okay, on the parametric form for the equation of an ellipse. So from this, it follows that we can get dy by dx. We can get that by doing dy by d theta and dividing it by dx by d theta. So what we end up with is for dy by d theta, differentiating this gives us 2 cosine theta. And differentiating x with respect to theta gives us minus 4 sine theta. And this cancels. We can simplify this, divide top and bottom by 2. So you end up with minus a half of cos theta over sine theta there. So this is our general gradient at any point on the curve. What we need to do is find out the value of cosine theta and sine theta at p. So if I just put here at p, we know that cosine theta would equal x over 4. So we know that x is minus 2 root 3, so we've got minus 2 root 3 over 4. So we can put that in there in a minute. And we also know that sine theta would be y over 2. So sine theta would equal y over 2. y is 1, so sine theta equals a half. Now we've got our values. 
we can find out what the gradient would be, dy by dx. It would be equal to cosine theta, which is minus 2 root 3 over 4, and that's divided by 2 sine theta, minus 2 sine theta, I should say. So that's going to be divided by minus 2 times a half. And so this cleans up to be positive root 3 over 2. So we arrive at the same gradient as we've got here. I'd like to think, though, that you can see that this method, when we have got a non-parametric coordinate here, is a lot quicker. Anyway, whatever method you take, we've got the gradient, so we're now in a position to find the equation of the tangent. So just put that in there, equation of the tangent at P is, and just using the usual method, that is y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, we've got y minus y1, which is 1, equals the gradient, which is root 3 over 2, times x minus x1. That's minus minus 2 root 3, so that's going to be plus 2 root 3. And we could leave it like that or clean it up in any other way, okay? So I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can go about finding the equation of a tangent to an ellipse when we need the Cartesian form. We're given a non-parametric coordinate here. Although we can use the parametric equations, the point about this was that it's a lot quicker, in my opinion anyway, to work through with implicit differentiation.